Hello and welcome to A Note for God. Today is episode 23 and I have titled it Research. I'll get into that in a minute. However, don't forget to follow me on Instagram at A Note for God. I'm trying to increase those subscribers over there, those followers. Also, if you're listening to me on YouTube, do not forget to subscribe. Thank you so much. And also, my podcast is basically on all podcast platforms, Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes. There, It's everywhere, all right? So use whatever platform you like, right? Stitcher, Um. Just listen to it, download it, and definitely share it with others. Don't forget that my website is anoteforgod.com. I do have a five-day free daily devotional. I also have my 30-day devotional for women. So if, you know, maybe you're no longer spending too much time with God and the Word, get this, download it, print it, and start spending some time with God morning, afternoon, and night. I am not one to tell you you have to do it in the morning at noon or night because as a mother of two, things are different. Every day is different, right? I will, however, say if you already know your schedule ahead of time, set that intention, right? But if you do it night one day, in the morning, the other day, it's not a big deal. Deal, as long as you spend time with God. And again, this devotional will definitely help you out. That is really how I started spending more time in the Word by having my devotional. Once I did that, then I would look up the verse on my Bible, in my Bible, and read a little bit on top and a little bit of bottom. And that's really how I, I got into the word. All right. So definitely don't forget to check that out at a note for God.com. Also on my YouTube, the link, the description is there. So if you don't want, if you forget the website, just go to the YouTube description. All right, let's get on to today's episode. Look, the title is research for a reason. I should have filmed this I shouldn't say film, but recorded this, this whole week and whatever reason didn't happen. But today I said to myself, this has to be recorded. And the reason it's called research, it's because so many times I have posted different things, whether it's the um, horoscopes, whether it's the enneagrams, whether it's um, astrology, yoga, and so many people like to debate, like, I know if I post that, you're going to have Christians debate on it. One of the things I'm going to tell you, I do not argue with non-believers, right? If they're non-believers and they want to argue, okay, you know what? You do you, boo. You do you. I'm not arguing with you anymore, right? Because once I read the Bible and certain scriptures that said they're on their own world, let them be, I let them be, right? You're going to get more frustrated arguing with a non-believer than anything and you know, I'm all about if they ask because they're genuinely concerned and they want a genuine answer, I'm all for it, right? But when it's the whole that combative state, I stop. Who I am trying to have a conversation is with fellow fellow believers who are practicing these things, right? Because we need to correct each other, right? Because as a new believer, uh, back in 2018, I really, okay, number one, I really never liked yoga. Let's just put it that way because it was too much being still. And I, I can't stay still. I like lifting weights. I like running. That's it, right? But as a new believer, I didn't know why yoga wasn't good, right? And you might not know why yoga isn't good, right? Because nobody's taught you. Nobody, nobody told you. And... It's not good, right? Because every pose represents a, uh, I guess, a solitude to that Hindu god or god or goddess, right? Um, and a lot of people like to say, "Well, I do yoga for stretching. I do yoga for this. I go to yoga class because I want to stretch." It's like, ma'am, that's not how it works. When you participate in a yoga class and do the moves. Again, each pose represents something, right? And 
those are the people, believe it or not, believers that are so hard on their belief. They're so hardcore on continue to practice yoga, right? And then you have um, the typical answer, which at this point, you know what? I'm just like, whatever. Their typical answer is, well, God knows my heart. And it's like, that's not how that verse works, right? Um, yoga, horoscopes, the Enneagram. And I think this week or last week I posted something about the Enneagram. And if you don't know that the Enneagram is wrong, this is where I get the title. Do your research, right? Don't just believe me. Don't just believe any other Christian person that is posting these things that are not of God. Do your own research, right? You may say, you know what? Let me do my research just to prove them wrong, that it is of God, whatever, right? Come to me and say, this is this is okay. And okay, fine. I will admit when I'm wrong, right? But when people are saying, well, the Enneagram isn't wrong. Um, it's just the way that we, I don't know, personalities with people. I don't know. That's how much I don't care about it, right? But my thing is, have you done research on the person that created the Enneagram? Most people like to say no. Or most people like to say on my comments and say, can you please provide articles? My answer is no. Google it. Because you have no problem spending time on social media stalking your ex. Yes, I said I went there. You have no problem going to these celebrities' pages on social media and seeing what they're doing. There. But, you know, they ain't doing nothing but witchcraft. You have no problem looking up how much your new phone's going to cost you, your new car is going to cost you, your new television is going to cost you. But you don't take time to do your own research about what the Bible says and what the Bible says is right and what the Bible says is wrong. You have no time when it comes to researching about the Bible. Even if it's, you know, I'm going to prove them wrong. You know, let me do my own research. I mean, most of the time you're going to find yourself that it's right, what the person said, right? And in that post specifically, I did attach some Bible verses, right? We are not to uh, talk to familiar, uh, we're not to talk to dead people. We are not to, that's necromancy. You're not to do that. That is not of God. That is not your dead relative. That's a familiar spirit, a demon. It's not, I'm sorry to crush it, but it is not. And a lot of people like to say that, right? Horoscopes. Oh, it's okay. I identify as a... What, what is it, Arius, Taurus, whatever, right? That is not of God, right? You don't consult saucers or, or what are they called? I'm just waiting blank. Sorcerers, wizards, you don't talk to those people, right? They're not talking to angels, right? They're talking to demons. And it's like so funny how people have become lazy to do research when they need to do research but are not lazy to do research on things that are really I irrelevant to what's going on I think personally specifically now you know this is March 2022 this is more of a time where you should be reading your bible you should be doing your research of what is right and what is wrong right and I'm going to read a verse for you here for a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. They will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. That is 2 Timothy 4, 3, right? Somebody told me I can't do yoga, but I'm going to find a pastor or a church that does holy yoga because I need to be comfortable with it. Or I'm just going to follow a pastor that likes to basically sugarcoat Christianity and really not tell me to repent and there's no such thing as hell and you should live your best life now and not really talk about the truth of what God has done to his people in the past or in history, right? We forget to read stories like uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. We forget about what happened. We forget about what all those people were doing. That is all wrong. But for whatever reason, I don't want to hear that part. That's so mean. God wouldn't do that. Have you read the Bible? 
And so many people want to call other Christian women, and I'm going to specifically stick to women, you know, because I'm not a man, um, you're so mean, this is so un unfair, you're not saying it love. I mean, have you have you read the Bible? Have you read how God talks? Have you read how Jesus talks? Have you read how my favorite of all, you know, one of them, is Paul? Straight to the point cut throat, right? We don't know when the end is coming. We don't, right? And anybody who tells you is a liar. Um, put yourself in his shoes. And even, even if you can't just, I mean, just think about it now. You don't know when the end is coming, but yet you want to sugarcoat and not be up front with that person and say, hey, you got to change your ways. That's not what the Bible says. If you're a believer and you say you believe in God and, and, and you're going to church, Number one, you shouldn't be doing yoga. Number two, you shouldn't be posting, oh, hashtag Scorpio, hashtag Aries. That's not, you know why? Because I'm going to tell you why. And the Bible says you should not be doing that. Enneagrams was created by a man who was talking to spirits. You think he was talking to angels? Of course not. Right there should tell you, give you a big clue. Spirits, demons. He didn't say the Holy Spirit, right? He didn't say the Holy Spirit. That should have given you a clue. But most of you are lazy. And most of you, I had one person say, well, Holy Spirit really hasn't told me it was right or wrong. It's just a gray area. What are you talking about a gray area? Demons created it. It's a no. I had another person during Halloween say, well, Halloween, it's a very gray area because I don't believe that if you dress the person um, a little kid as a lion, if there's anything wrong with it. But I do believe that if you dress a kid like Chucky, it's bad. Are you like slow? Are you kidding me? Halloween is the number one satanic holiday for them. How dare you as a Christian say, I'm not really sure it's a gray area. There is no, no gray. Right? There is no gray area. Too many of you are playing in the devil's playground. I don't even know if that's a thing, but there you go. I'm going to dip my... It's okay because it's a gray area. God doesn't approve of it. Read your Bible and then you're going to know what God approves of. But most people are not, right? If you're a believer and you're like, man, I'm not sure about this. Ask somebody, your pastor... Or ask somebody around you. That's why I say it's so important to surround yourself, uh, surround yourself with women of God who just know a little bit more than you, right? And I'm glad if you know a lot more than I do, right? Surround yourself with those kind of women and ask them, hey, um, what about crystals? Is that okay? I'm not really sure. What about these, I don't know, altars? Is that okay? Ask, genuinely ask, and they're going to tell you, you know, whether it's a yes or a no, right? Yes or no. Ask people. And stop making excuses because you think it's okay, because you think it's comfortable, because you, you've created this soul ties to whatever thing you know is wrong, right? Again, yoga, that's a big no. You shouldn't be participating in yoga. Do you don't believe me? Do your research. Hence the title. Do your research. And it's going to tell you exactly what yoga, what each pose means. And a lot of the high, I, I don't even know what they're called, high ups of the Hinduism, yoga, whatever, they're very upset that us Westerners use it as a stretching thing. And they're like, it's not. It is time for you to connect with our God, goddess. I mean, if they're upset, what does that tell you, right? Horoscopes. We don't do horoscopes. I don't identify as a Taurus, Scorpio, what is it, whatever. That's a no. We, do, we don't do that, right? Same thing with the Enneagram. I identify as a number. I don't even know the numbers of it. I don't even know how many numbers, maybe 10, maybe nine. I don't know. Because number one, I'm going to be honest, I don't like taking these tests. Because I just don't. But as I was 
looking through social media and a lot of people were doing so I was like wow that what is this thank you Jesus there is a video I follow Doreen Virtue and if you do not follow her I highly suggest you follow her because she is a ex new ager she got saved a couple years ago she was um in the new age world I think she said for almost 20 30 years and if you came from the new age you know who Doreen Virtue is when I heard or read that she got saved, I'm like, wow. Thank you, God. And I, I think I bought maybe, I was a little into the new age, so I think I might have bought one of her cards, never her books, but I knew who she was. She was so high up in the new age movement, especially in Hay House production. When she got saved, my God, I was like, ooh, that's so good. Anyway, she actually has, I think, one or two videos talking about the Enneagram. How it's not good. Who created it? The background of the person who created it. So before you go on social media defending your, I don't know, demonic soul ties, go do your research or ask. This, I guess, society or world has become so lazy to look up things that need to be looked up and have no problem really have no problem looking up other stuff really irrelevant stuff right like you spend hours upon hours looking up i wonder when the new iphone's gonna come on but yeah you don't spend two seconds looking up at the bible this is i i posted this also on my facebook ephesians 4 14 when you do your research, when you get educated, when you know God, when you know the Bible, that, and I'm going to start reading, number 14, then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Once you read your Bible, once you know the truth, any new teaching you're going to be like, that's not of God. Any church that comes out with any new teaching like Enneagrams or Holy Yoga, you're going to be like, pump your brakes. Either I'm out because you're attending or I'm going to stop listening. Right? Ephesians, that's Ephesians 4, 14. We will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. That's what it seems like. Every every time you turn around, there's something new. A church has something new. And you know what really just irritates me? A, a church has something new to captivate your attention. And that is so sad when you have all these mega churches, these churches even in your own city, who try to captivate your attention because we need you to say, you know what? If you're a Christian, if you're a believer, you believe in the Bible, you have that good relationship with God, who cares who cares what entertainment they have up there? They don't. You don't need to be entertained by the pastor, by the worship team. You don't need to be entertained. You are to sit there and listen to what the pastor has to say. And that's what's going on with a lot of mega churches. You know, let's do the biggest production ever because we have to entertain these people. We have to keep them coming. And it's the, it's the sad part because you're not learning anything. You're not learning how to be a Christian. You're not learning how to read the Bible. I mean, I truly believe that the, that the pastor, when he does his Sunday service, it's my opinion, should really convict you once in a while. Like, ooh, that one hurt. Ooh, I took that personal because I'm doing that. Ooh, God, thank you for speaking to me through the pastor because, I mean, I knew I was wrong, but now that the pastor said, definitely. I truly believe that, right? You shouldn't leave every Sunday like, I feel so amazing. I'm doing everything right because we're not perfect people. We're all going through our trials. And every time the pastor says something I that I can definitely get convicted, <laughs> I'm like, thank you, right? Because that's growth. That's, oh my goodness, you said something I was thinking, and I'm definitely going to change. I'm definitely going to take that into consideration. But above all, going back to the title, do your research. 
don't believe everything that you see. Do your research. It's not that hard. Most of the time it takes you maybe, maybe let's say five to 10 minutes, right? I'm giving you a little bit more time. Five to 10 minutes just to do research, just to read. I mean, you're, you want to be lazy to read? Go on YouTube. So many videos on YouTube. Is yoga bad? What do Christians say about yoga? And then there you go. Ex-yoga teacher states that how bad yoga is. Ex-yoga teacher says how they were possessed. Start listening to their testimonies, right? Enneagram. How the Enneagram was created, and then you'll find the videos. That's if you don't want to read, right? That's why we have YouTube. So I know I kind of went a little off on a uh, tangent there, but it's so important to do our research with anything and everything. And it's so surprising people don't do their research, right? And like I said, if you truly want to know, like, hey, am I, I just got saved, but I'm not really sure. Should I have these little luck, luck charms and stuff like that, which, you know, I understand. Ask somebody, surround yourself with women of God that are going to say, no, that's not of God. You need to throw that away. Having this in your house is not of God. You need to throw that away. Having these books by these people are not of God. You need to throw that away, right? Little by little, you start cleansing yourself, right? Start cleaning your house, especially of things that are not of God. And oftentimes, we assume that what we were doing, what we had before we got saved is fine now that we're saved because God knows our heart. But as a Christian, you have to grow every single day and you have to ask people, is this okay? Is this not okay? Ask God, the Holy Spirit, ask them, is this okay or not okay? It's not like hard like people think it is. And I love those two different Bible verses I just stated, right? Second Timothy, I absolutely love. For a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. They will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will let them tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. You know, that first part is so important. For a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. There's so many people that stop following certain people online or churches because, oh, they're just being so mean. God wouldn't do that. God wouldn't say that. That's what you're hearing. What you're hearing from the pastor is sound and wholesome teaching. Perhaps something that you haven't been used to ever. Or you don't want to hear the truth. And then you decide to leave the church, decide to go to another church where they're going to preach to me all about how everything's good and I'm allowed to do holy yoga and I'm allowed to identify as a number because I'm number five. I don't even know what that means. I don't even know the details of the numbers, but I know there's just numbers, right? Spend time in the Word. Spend time with God, asking God. Do your research. It's not that hard. When I have a question... I do research, go online, go to the Bible. Above all, the Bible tells you this is not of God. If you are going to psychics, that's not of God. No, ma'am. No, sir. You can't do that. Consulting the stars to see when I'm going to get married or when I'm going to have a child. Going to a witch doctor, that's not of God. None of that is of God. And a lot of cultures have that embedded in them. So it's just normal, but it's not normal, right? It's not normal to do witchcraft. You might not identify it as witchcraft because how you were brought up. But if you read the Bible, it's witchcraft. It's witchcraft and and we're going to call it how it is, right? Like I said, definitely if you have, if you haven't followed Doreen Virtue, definitely follow her. One of my favorite guys um, on YouTube or a man is uh, John Ramirez. He is amazing. Ex-Satanist, like one of the top back 20 years ago, he got saved. Definitely listen to him. Tiffany Montgomery, 
She has her YouTube channel, Amazing Women of God. I mean, I have learned so much from her. And a lot of people get offended like, oh, she's not so nice. It is what it is. Look, we're <laughs> the world is coming to an end. We don't have time to be tickling your ears, making it all sound good. I want to make sure I go to heaven. That's fine. It's you, it's okay. Get over it, right? Um, another person I follow, you know, he has passed away, is Stephen Darby. All his videos on YouTube are amazing. I have learned so much from him. Like, I'm telling you. He's cutthroat. He's straight to the point, but I love him. I love that about him. I love anybody who is straightforward. We don't have time to be tickling ears, sugarcoating. And if you haven't listened to my other episode, uh, Don't Sugarcoat Christianity, definitely do that. These are some people I follow, and you should as well, or, or go listen to them. YouTube, a lot of them are on YouTube. Definitely do that. It's not that hard to do research. And one of the things that... I don't want to say frustrates me, but just makes me think like, man, you have all these believers. It's so funny how the believers get so upset when you put things that are not of God and they get upset because it's okay. God said it's okay. How is God going to tell you one thing to, that to do is okay, but to everybody else is not okay. And the Bible says it's not okay. God is not a God of contradiction. He doesn't go back and forth like you do, right? If it's no in the Bible, it's no for everybody else. For all his children. Right? It's it's all very simple. I hope you guys do your research. Right? I hope definitely you follow me on Instagram at anotesforgod.com. Well, that's my website. But on Instagram is anotesforgod. And again, I'm going to end this episode like I always do because Matthew 25, 23 is one of my favorite verses of all times because when I close my eyes in this world and open up my eyes to see God my father I want him to reach his hand out to me and say well done good and faithful servant till next time